Hello, I am Javier Gervais. And I'm Sonia Garcia. Welcome to UTA Spotlight. Today, a group is devoted to helping others with concepts such as simple living. Students react to events involving cultural appropriation, and we look into the Lady Mavericks soccer team against UTD. Grab your bags and follow us around campus. As college students, keeping up with exams and homework can lead to a lot of stress. But there's an organization that balances stress with deep thinking. The Montreal Lounge organization is dedicated to helping members with concepts based on simple living and high thinking. As college students, keeping up with too much homework and exams can lead to stress and an unspiritual happiness. According to a report by the Wellness Center, the results of continuing stress may cause disruption in the physical, emotional, spiritual, and social health areas. By joining the Mantra Lounge program, students have an opportunity to find their inner selves by chanting different names of God, in this case, Hare Krishna, and through teachings of wisdom from literature all over the world. Inner happiness, inner peace, inner satisfaction. Today we're, we're out here chanting this Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. To, to cleanse the mirror of the heart. Aside from making an appearance once a month to distribute literature and free vegan food, the Mantra Lounge meets once a week. Meetings are led by different monk leaders who teach members how to explore different meditation techniques and talk about who they really are as individuals. The direction in life. It is, it is not important that being in the university that we just spend our time studying. I, I feel a sense of the importance that we also have to be spiritual. Not the stereotype or the superstitious one, but the rational, spiritual person. Mantra, man for man, tra for satisfied. Anybody could chant it and at any time you can chant it. You can, you can really feel the difference after chanting it. Are you feeling overwhelmed with school or any personal issues? Then the Mantra Lounge organization is a place for you. They meet here at the UC every Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. where meditation is the path to find their soul. Mari Alvarez, UTA News. The Mantra Club meets every Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. at the University Center. San Francisco State University had a video go viral over race appropriation. Being a diverse university, students were asked how they felt about the event. David Dunn has a story. It can happen anywhere. On campus, in a hallway, or on the staircase. Last week, it happened at San Francisco State University. And thanks to one student and his smartphone camera, the issue is being brought to light. Yo, girl, stop touching me. Yo, girl, stop touching me right now. Get off me. That's no reason, yo. I don't need your disrespect. I don't need your disrespect. Why are you filming this? To everyone's safety. The incident occurred when Benita Tyndall, an SFSU student employee, followed and confronted Corey Goldstein, another student at the university, for stylizing his hair into dreadlocks. She said he had no right to the hairstyle, saying that, quote, it's my culture, end quote. Bonita Tindall is currently under investigation by the university for her transgression towards Corey Goldstein. And even though Goldstein doesn't plan on pressing any charges, videographer Austin King does for the damage received to his camera. The current incident has sparked a discussion on what is or isn't considered cultural appropriation. I've talked to students all across the UTA campus. Here's what they've had to say. When I think of cultural appropriation, that's basically taking somebody else's culture or using a part of somebody else's culture. I kind of just think that that's kind of what everybody does. Um, whether you believe in evolution, everybody coming from a common ancestor, or just from the fact that we're in the USA where it's supposed to be the melting pot. Everybody's culture comes over and everybody adopts some piece of some culture and everything. Last time I checked, this was a free country where you could do or say whatever you want and freedom of expression. He wanted to do that. Yeah. And she should be accepting of that. Honestly, who the hell is she to say that? He can't do that because it's 
her culture. That it's just it's just the standard of morals. Like it's not even a cultural thing. It's like she was touching, like she was grabbing them, and he had the right to wear his hair how he wanted to. So it's not even cultural. It's moral, like wrong. The university has issued a statement since the incident took place, saying that the university promotes the rights of the campus community to engage in free speech, but does not condone behavior that impedes the safety or well-being of others. We are taking the matter seriously and will promptly and thoroughly investigate this incident through applicable university channels, including our campus student conduct procedures. David Dunn, UTA News. UTA encourages any student who believes that he or she has been discriminated to report the incident immediately. UTA women's soccer has their eyes on the trophy as they face UTD. Vida Diana Martinez has the story. The Lady Mavericks had a good start to the game with control over the ball, but after 10 minutes into the game, UTD put up a good fight and dominated. I think my team gave them a good run, um, but they, they scored the goals, so it, it was just unlucky on our end. Um, again, I just think exhaustion set in, but overall it was an equally played game. The Lady Mavericks took every opportunity to score, but unfortunately UTD controlled the ball for most of the game and they ended the score 4 to nothing. Center midfielder Itzel de Alba gave us her thoughts on the game. Well, they play a very aggressive, so I guess that's what we lacked of. We were kind of too soft with them. Um, we had to focus on, I guess, being more aggressive, playing faster. I know they play a lot of passes, but other than that, we did, I think we did very good as a team. We did a lot of through balls, a lot of passing, and I think that all we could do is keep practicing and get better like that. Coach Fuentes hopes to have an improvement for their next game with a better turnout. Uh, well, we have one tournament left, one game left. Uh, the next game will be against UNT at uh, UTA. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing a full team, 11 v 11, because our tournaments are 7 v 7. Seeing how they cope with, you know, the added players for the fall season. And the tournament will be in Houston, and hopefully we take it. You know, we should be able to uh, beat those teams. Verdiana Martinez, UTA News. UTA's women's soccer has their next match on April 20th against the University of North Texas here at UTA. That's it for this edition of UTA Spotlight. On behalf of our producer, James Belknap, our videographer, Jeffrey Burtis, and I'm Javier Gerbe. And I'm Sonia Garcia. We'll see you around campus.